welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. At Deep Adventure Ministries, we, our creed is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. Remember, God is wild. Uh, he's, he's the one that made dinosaurs. He's the one that made black holes. He's the one that has sent this earth hurtling in space. Since the time I've talked, we've probably already traveled thousands of miles through space. Um, he's a scary guy. You know, you have uh, one of the first things we've learned about the Lord is the fear of the Lord, is to respect the Lord, that your very life is held in his hand. Your very essence is because uh, he chose to infuse, infuse you uh, with a spiritual, rational show, soul that has the ability to have communion with God. And so uh, we want to uh, uh, take, uh, take this, this hour we have together to inspire, to challenge, and to get you, give you traction in your life. And one of the things that we do is we know a lot of men are, are isolated out there, more and more. My wife is so, when she goes to Hawaii, her, her, her number one thing she, she seems to say again and again is, in Hawaii, there's a community of men. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, I don't know how to say it. It's just different. than the, It's more like it was here 50 years ago. The men gather together. The men work together, especially on the beach, among the surfing community. When you walk along the beach, everyone younger than me calls me uncle. Uh, and the older men teach the younger men how to surf, how to read waves, how to throw net, how to spearfish. Um, there's a community of men. And we really lack that in our world today. In fact, our world has become almost androgynous. There's, we, we've tried to neutralize our manliness, and, uh, and, uh, and, and women have tried to become more masculine. But God didn't make us that way. God made us in, in a very unique special way, equal uh, in, in dignity, but in a very unique way. And so that's why one of the reasons why we have this ministry, when we have something called Bears Man Cave, it's a really cool thing. I don't know if anybody, well, there's one other group I think that does it, actually. The Catholic Man Show has something like this, too. But what we do is you uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can join our secret Facebook group. You can't join by going to Facebook. And uh, you can become a member of the Man Cave, and then we challenge each other there. We post our needs. We, we share inspirational messages. And, and every two weeks, we have a Zoom video chat where I can see you, you can see me, and we all talk about what's going on in our lives. And then we spend, about, uh, spend the other part of the time going through our study of the virtues. Men are isolated. Men are alone. And we need to bring the community of men back together. And one of the manliest guys, one of the coolest guys I know, um, is the first speaker I ever heard at a men's conference in the Tampa Bay Men's Conference about I don't know, eight years ago, I flew in from Hawaii. I heard there's a men's conference, a Catholic men's conference. What is that all about? I flew in from Hawaii. I walk in. They talk to Jamie Derzelpolsky. He's the guy who was the Spirit FM drive home DJ at the time. And they go, Jamie, I'm so glad you're here. Father Larry's going to be here speaking, and, he's, and you can go right in there and have a seat. And he goes, this is my friend Bear Watson. They go, oh, Bear, so glad you're here. Confessions are over there. So yeah. they must have already had me figured out. But Father Larry was the first speaker I heard, and he put a fire in me, and that's part of the reason why we have this radio show today. So Father Larry Richards, aloha. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Oh, we, we love you, and we love your, your uh, challenge Thank to you. men. But a lot of people, uh, we, we hear your message, but we really, uh, some of us would really like to know the background story of what caused Father Larry. <laughs> How, what was your personal journey with the Lord? Oh, when I was a high school kid, I've been in seminary since I was 17, but when I was a junior in high school, I'm sitting in English class and I brought, brought, you know, my family, the best way to explain my family is if you see Roseanne on television, that's my family, but my, but my family was much worse. You know, my mother was a police officer and my father was a police officer. And, uh, and so growing up fighting and all kinds, all kinds of stuff, I grew up in the city of Pittsburgh and I went to a public high school. And we're in, uh, I was a junior and I'm sitting in English class and we're reading to play Our Town. 
And as we're reading the play Our Town, the, if you haven't read the play or saw the play, the main character, she dies. And anyway, I don't want to ruin it for everybody. I'm going to ruin it, ruin it for you, Bear. Anyways, <laughs> the, uh, after the... Uh, when she dies, it was, I'm sitting in English class and I'm, it was the first time I realized I will die someday. And I was like, I didn't believe in anything. And I thought just because I was brought up Catholic doesn't make it true. I thought that 50 years ago at that time, I didn't exist. And a hundred years from now, I won't exist again. So what's the big deal? But I start thinking, I want to find out what's true. I want to find out what's true. So I would go to downtown Pittsburgh at the Church of the Epiphany every day, and I'd say, Jesus, are you real? Aren't you, aren't you real? Do you care? Don't you care? And I spent at least six months there. And then once I was watching TV, and uh, it was Billy Graham, Graham was on, if everybody remembers Billy Graham. And yeah, he just said, I've seen people die. And some people, he says, when they're dying, they're all afraid. And other people, when they're dying, they're saying, saying, Jesus, I'm coming home. And I thought, boy, if you can face death with no fear, that would be one of the greatest things. So I sat there, and that's where I'm kneeling and kneeling and, uh, at the church every day during lunch and saying, you got it. If you're here, I'll do anything for you. If not, then, okay, it's time for me to live, me to live my life. Mm. And so one day he revealed himself to me. And I remember kneeling there, and I says, Jesus, I'll do anything you want. Tell me what to do. And he says, be a priest. And I said, okay. And so I entered the <laughs> seminary at 17. It's so beautiful because there really is that moment in life when uh, so often people will hear that, that, have that clear as a bell sense of what the Lord's calling to me. I was, at the, I was the same age. I was 17 years old. Oh, I, was wow. sitting, I was sitting in a real boring social studies class. And uh, I had just moved from California to Waco, Texas. No more ocean, Oops. right? And I remember contemplating yeah. the waves rising and falling and, and, and my sand castles being washed away. And like, wow, these waves have been breaking before I got here and they're going to continue to be breaking after I'm gone. But, but um, memento mori, you know, like I came to that moment yep. of, of, of death and seeing a sailboat sail across the horizon and think that's going to be me one of these days. But so then I moved to California and I'm sitting in this really, really boring social studies class after lunch, of course. And I went into that sort of... Um, daydream and suddenly father it was like something opened up so so beautiful and so dramatic so cosmically that i could be a father that i could bring a child an eternal being into the world and from that moment every decision i've made in life is based on being a father you know what i didn't go drinking i didn't get into drugs i worked two jobs three jobs worked my way through college everything leading up to meeting the woman that was the mother of my children and having my children, and even now as a dad. But there is that moment sometimes in people's life when they have that sense of calling. And then our job is to, to, to search that out, to see if that's really the Lord, and to respond yep. to the Lord. So I exactly. really understand that. Well, then, Absolutely. Uh, tell, me, tell us just a little bit more about, uh, about your journey before we... I don't want to leave And so then so. I, I went and uh, I... Didn't even tell my family. I called the seminary. I wrote a letter to the vocation director of the Society of the Divine Word, Divine Word Missionaries. And the very next day, as soon as he got the letter, he he drove right to Pittsburgh, never called, and took my letter that I wrote him. And on the other side said, I'm here to see you. Call me back. And I was living at my, at my grandmother at the time. And my grandmother found the letter before I found the letter. And so when I got home, home I said to uh, I'm walking up the steps and she says, so you didn't tell me you wanted to be a priest. And I said, well, how do you know I want to be a priest? And she said, and she holded out this letter and I go, oh, so I called the guy. He came the next day wow. and uh, they wouldn't even uh, take me because I wasn't a, a good student. I didn't uh, go to class a lot. I played hooky a lot. I was a bad kid in lots of ways of ways. And so they, they says, well, if you decide if you want to come, you have to go back here. And I said, okay, I'll go back a year. And so I became a junior again in high school and entered into seminary. And so, so, uh, and it was a great thing. You know, I never doubted once since I was 17 years old, I was going to be a priest. I, always, I, always, I was even thrown out of seminary yet. I always knew that the Lord wanted me to be a priest. And I've been a priest 30 years, uh, uh, 31 years as a deacon on this past Wednesday, and I've never, ever looked back. I love priesthood. We're so glad that you do, too, that you responded to that call. You've meant so much to so many people and so much to me, you know, personally, too, uh, though, though uh, we haven't had a lot of personal contact. But 
Uh, you know, we, we actually uh, got to see each other a couple months ago at the Catholic yep. Men's Leadership Alliance in Dallas, uh, yep. Texas, the home of Whataburgers, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I, had, oh, I hadn't yeah. had one in 20 <laughs> years or something. But yes, uh, so, so we're talking with Father Larry Richards. Normally, I take a little bit more time to introduce my guests. I just assume you don't need to, to, uh, to uh, know that much about Father Larry. He's written so many books, Be a Man, um, a Spiritual Warrior, there, uh, and his and his ministry Certainly. website is the reason for our hope dot org, which is definitely an evangelistic statement uh, to know our faith well enough to know the reason for our hope. I know every morning, uh, Father, weekday mornings, I do Ocean Sunrise Catechism on Facebook Live, and then it's sent to YouTube and distributed video version. And it's kind of cool because we build a sort of a community uh, while we're doing this. As I'm teaching, people are 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 texting in, pray for me, or yes, I remember when the Lord taught me that, or just this, this, this sense of community. And today, after three years of going through the Ocean Sunrise Catechism, we completed our first pass through the Catechism. But it's, wow. it, why do we wow. read the Catechism every day? Why does the Catechism to say use it for Lectio Divina and for meditation? It's for this thing, the reason for our hope, so that when people ask us questions, we can communicate to, to them the gospel. We're talking with Father Larry Richards. This is the Bear Wastic Adventure. We'll be right back with more. That's right. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. In a moment, we'll be j joining uh, Father Larry Richards as our co-adventure guide today. But I need to give a shout-out to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Uh, they're our corporate sponsor for this show. They help, uh, help us defray the cost of doing this show. Uh, EW10 doesn't pay us to do it. Uh, we love their model. Their model of doing radio isn't pay-per-view, where if you have enough money, you can get on, on uh, EW10. So many other Christian networks, not to put them down, but just to say from a point of discernment, when you listen to some of the preaching, you're always trying to gauge, is this the Lord or isn't the Lord? Or how much of this can I accept? How much I can't accept? But EWTN, they actually have a discernment department, and you have to pass the mustard. And they don't, it's not pay to play with them. They, they, they say, yes, we want your show, and you give them their show. But luckily, we have some sponsors with Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and they are awesome. They, they helped me um, finance a car when I was, before uh, the woman that was helping me at NDFCU, uh, before she knew that Notre Dame Federal Credit Union was becoming a sponsor for our show, I said, I want to test them. So we were shooting Long Ride Home, and we need a little bit of financing, a little uh, bridge financing. So I said, I've got a car. I'll finance it through, see if I can finance it and get some cash out. And while we were shooting the show, and we, you know, when you're on the motorcycle, you don't get a lot of time to talk, she was texting me, she was writing me, she was emailing me, um, and, we, and she got this loan together for me, with, 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 made it so easy, so we love the people there at Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Uh, Bettina is who I'm talking about. Of course, I love Tom Gripe, the president, and Ariba, and the other members of, of the credit union. So thank you, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, for bringing this show to, uh, to, uh, the people who, to our viewers. We have Father Larry Richards with us. Father Larry, thank you for being on my show. It's great to be here, as always, just to be with you, Bear. It's an honor for you, I know. Father it's Larry, an honor. 
Father Larry, uh, before we, I want to talk a little bit about the CMLA, the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. But the yep. coolest thing that you did uh, while we were there is the first night, after everybody traveling, and I know you travel like a warrior, you called for an hour of contemplative prayer for, e- for everyone each, each day. And we started that out with an hour of prayer. Tell us about the importance of that hour. The, most people, when they pray, they do a lot of talking. But mm. prayer is best when we do a lot of listening. You know, it's speak, Lord, your Lord, your servant is listening, or it's your will be done, or it's, uh, you know, let it be done to me. So the biggest thing in all prayer, and so especially when we have men in leadership, that instead of all of us coming together and saying, this is what I think we should do, Amen. we need to come together and listen to Jesus, and they'll, and they'll say, Jesus, you tell us what to do, and we'll mm-hmm. do anything you ask of us. And that's why, you know, when I've been the spirit, spirits director since its inception, and I just said, the most important thing we do when leaders come together Together is we need to listen to the very leader, Jesus himself, because we're his disciples. We don't tell him what to do. He, te- he tells us what to do, and that means we need to listen to him. So every day, shut up for an hour and listen to, listen to the Lord. And I think uh, the more we do that, the more we can bring his will to this earth. You know, um, I was talking on the CMLA conference call. By the way, once a month, Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance has a phone-in conference call, and they interviewed me this last week. And you know, I love that man as you, and I love uh, the Exodus 90 and so many of the programs that are out there. They're in- essential, but I'm more of a hands-on type evangelist, and they asked me, what, do you, what is your key to evangelization? And I said an hour of prayer in the, in the morning. Absolutely. Start sure. your day. And, and, I, and I likened it to when, uh, you know, in, in Hawaii, we see guys wearing these lifeguard T-shirts. You can buy them at Abercrombie and Fitch with the big red yeah. cross. When someone needs rescuing, though, we know they're just posers. I don't know if you can see, Father. Mm. I have on my wrist. Um, mm, see if I can get it to the mic. Two things. I got I have it. My, I have my Fitbit, but I have as a oh, Benedic- as a Benedictine oblate. Uh, for gosh, I think almost forty years, I've prayed the Jesus Prayer. These are the Jesus Good beads job. the monks of the desert uh, uh, sure. you make, and I got it in Greece. And of course, my Hawaiian fish hook because I'm a Catholic evangelist. Every Catholic is. There you go. But I, this, when you called us to prayer, of course, I took off my my. Uh, my uh, Jesus prayer, uh, uh, you know, bracelet, I guess you'd call it. And I, did, and, and I just say the name, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And when my wife and I do it together, I start out with that full sentence and then gradually sh- shorten it one kind of word at a time until I just say Jesus. And then Good. we come back to it. And the thing that you did for us there is you said, I think you said basically take the whole hour to say one our Father. Sure. Get, That's my penance when I get when people come to confession, they they get one hour father for 30 years. And I say, say it slowly. You don't have to spend an hour, but you have to say it slowly. And listen, and that gives you time to listen and to meditate. It does. To meditate on God's word. And that's the key to evangelization is, well, man, you know, I, you know, I, I've had uh, coached coached people before, you know, in, in martial arts mm-hmm. primarily. And Okay, this is what I want you to do. And as I'm about to start saying it, they run off and do it. They start doing it without listening. Yes. And they're basically just spinning their wheels. But if we'll take the time to listen and to receive the power, we can move in the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Tell us what the vision of CMLA is, Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. It's the, the main thing is for it to bring uh, equip leaders to lead, men's leaders. And again, I think... And I think that the greatest need in the church today is male leadership. And so, like, uh, we just have a committee we met on Monday about, uh, you know, for spirituality. So how can people, because the most important thing is, thing is we already talked about is prayer. So how can we make and help men pray? What are the resources available and what can we do for them? And then to talk about to be a true leader means you're a true servant, that a man is one who gives up his life for others. Others. God, God makes us strong to protect the weak, not to lord over them, not to say, oh, I'm a man. You know, the, the big thing is we become like Jesus. And the true focus of what masculinity is, is Christ on the cross. Mm. Here is a man who has one life to live and gives it all away. 
mm-hmm. that got to be to be our goal, that got to be what we do. We take the one life God gives us and we give it away every day. And so we give guys the the tools necessary to do this. We also want them equip uh, men's conferences throughout the country that these are some good practices because we've been doing this for a while. And so often when men come together and they want to do a men's conference and they don't know how to do it, well, that's what we're going to be we're going to be doing is helping them do that. Who are some great speakers? Who are people that are orthodox? Who are what are the teachings of the church? Church on masculinity. What's the scriptures on ma- on masculinity? And really put that out so we have a resource for men. And, and frankly, Father, I've spoken at men's conferences where they were, sure, they were tuned in to the logistics of it, uh, the preceding uh, efforts to uh, make a phone, like the things we learn in the excellence in business. They, I think, in one of them in the Milwaukee area, they make these. They, they call almost every person's number they have in the diocese yep. to reach out to men. There's that. That pre that preliminary thing. There's the preliminary prayer, but some some of the conferences I go to, I can just tell them this is not going to work because of the way they've structured it. You know, you and I have sure. been around enough when we go. This is going to be a nightmare. I mean, I do my best, but if if you would yeah. just listen. And so, why not go to to the to go and share what you're doing, share with other men, and find out uh, what is working and what isn't working instead of reinventing the wheel. And by the way, a lot of people come to me and go, you know, I don't have a men's group in my church. What should I do? Maybe I should go to another church. No, maybe you should start a men's group. Or I, exactly. I don't have a men's conference in my diocese. What should I do? Maybe you should start a men's conference. But that's the beauty of the CMLA. Exactly. It's to help empower people to do that. Exactly. And we'll give you the we'll give you stuff about how to do that. I mean, that's the point. We want every diocese in America and the world eventually, but right now, right now the focus on America to every single diocese in the United States have a men's conference. Because again, the devil loves to make us weak because then we can't protect the strong. I often have said that the church is in a problem today because of the lack of masculinity. We need, need to come together and be strong. We need to fight for the faith. And God can do great things for people who are willing to do anything for him. You know, I, as I, when I was about 19, when I first gave my life to the Lord, experienced that personal encounter in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, 1973, June 17th. I just remember this verse from Habakkuk. Uh, this radio show will be delayed, but it was the mass reading from uh, a week ago. Uh, write the vision down in word in letters big enough so that the one who's r- reading it can run while he's reading. If the vision tarries, uh, wait for it, for it will surely come. And it's a vision yep. of, a, of, of a runner who is meant to take the king's message and run through the countryside, yelling as he goes through the different villages, this is the word of the king. This vision of CMLA is one of those things. The vision is for one million men to be in weekly cell groups in America. That's the mission of CMLA. It's one of those visions where you go, write it down in letters big. And and, and if it tarries, wait for it, for it will come. But we don't wait just by sitting and twiddling our our thumbs. Uh, I know, I I forget if it's in in the Hebrew or in the Greek, the word for wait, it means to mend a net. Prepare, get the net ready. Uh, God's going to bring a harvest. We're talking with yep, Father God Larry. Such a plan. We're talking with Father Larry Richards. Father, what's your website where they can reach you? The reason for our hope dot org. The reason for our hope. But all you have to do is put Father Larry Richards in <laughs> Google, and that'll be the first thing that comes up. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I just love you so much. Okay, well, this is Thank the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're going to take a little break. We'll be right back with more of Father Larry Richards. I uh, want to remind you, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. We've got a lot of merch there in our web store, T-shirts, our books, uh, warrior rosaries, DVDs of Long Ride Home. So it's a great thing to go and uh, wives, get that for your husbands, your sons, your brothers, and uh, invite you to go to our website. We've done it. John, Lynn, John Flynn has done an incredible job developing that website along with Pete Sox. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. That's right. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. 
Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, if you're watching, uh, you're listening to this on EWTN, or, or we have it on all different podcast formats too, but the cool thing is, is Father Larry just waved at you uh, a moment ago, and that's because we record this on YouTube. If you go to our YouTube channel, it's the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, press subscribe, ring the little bell, you'll be notified whenever our, uh, our, our radio show uh, is released. But here's another thing. We have this need. You know, Long Ride Home is very expensive. It costs about $1,000 a minute to produce a quality TV show like that. And uh, EWTN supports it a little bit, but the rest of it comes from our donors. So we set up a Patreon account, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure uh, Patreon account, and you can go there, and if you give it, there's different levels of giving, but at one of the levels, if you give, uh, you receive this radio show. Father, this radio show won't even air for about four months. But people wow. who are our Patreon donors get it right now. And wow. our Long Ride Home TV show, when they, when they give, they get all 10 episodes of season one, all six episodes of season two. And season three, every episode, as its director's cut is done before EW10 has even approved it, they get that. So you get early access to, to everything we do. And more importantly, you guys, if, you, if you're receiving um, a give to a ministry. Now, there's so many worthy ministries. We know... You may have others that, are, that, that you feel God is leading you to give. But if you do feel God is leading you to give, go to Patreon, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. I know, I know this, though, that God's in control, and he's, he's our Absolutely. provider. He's your provider, too. Father yeah, Larry, I always, yeah, go ahead. Exactly. I, I always tell people, as Mother Teresa said, God has plenty of money, but it's in your pockets. Give it up. <laughs> I remember I was talking to Robert Tunmeyer. I got to have breakfast with him a couple weeks ago, you know, from Catholic right. Men's Leadership Alliance. I was in Baylor. That's my alumni, right? I went to, I went to the Baylor game, and uh, he was talking about when he was uh, having that first kind of come-to-Jesus moment, he was thinking about buying a, a painting that he really, a, a very expensive painting that he didn't really need. And at one point, he, he was, oh, this is nice, I'll get this, you know? And then all of a sudden, he heard his voice, this sense of him, that's not your money, that's God's money. And i got to mm. tell you, Father, as a CPA, I see my Protestant... Christians are giving, most of them are giving 10%, and I think Catholics give, Catholics give tip money. Like, here's a nice tip exactly. for Father. Here's a $2 bill. Or five. We need to, if, you know, you know where your heart is. Where's your money going? You know where your heart is. Absolutely. And I always say for guys and girls in the faith that we're all called to tithe, and that means 10% of our money goes to God. I don't care how it goes to God, but if you don't give 10% of your money to God, you steal from God. It belongs to him. Now, some people say, well, Father, that's an Old Testament concept. I go, oh, yeah, you're right. Well, you could do the New Testament, <laughs> Testament concept, and the New Testament concept is you got to give everything, you know, so <laughs> you can decide whether you want to go Old Testament or New Testament in this regard, but I always say you give to God first and God will bless you abundantly. The problem is we don't trust God with our money. We think uh, we have to take care of ourselves, but we have to learn that when more generous we are, the more generous God is to us. Amen. Well said. Father Larry, what is yes. God's word for men for men today? What is manliness? What are the rules of manliness? Again, you know, when I wrote my book, it was called Be a Man, and it was from King David. And, you know, King David was not a good man in so many ways. You know, he was a murderer. He was a rapist. He was, uh, oh, there was so much. He uh, killed so many people. That's why God wouldn't let him build a temple. But God looks at David, and not only in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament through St. Paul. Paul says, here is a man after my own heart who will do my will. It's like, really? Even with all his problems, with all his sins, with all, all his focus on self, he still always wanted to do the will of God. And so that got to be where we are, that we decide we're going to, we exist to do the will of God. Jesus said, the world must know that I love the Father and I do everything to please him. So again, I become a good soldier, if you will, by trying to please the person who's over me and saying, I will do anything. I exist to please you. And so when we start doing that and we, and we do that by laying down our life, you know, not by, you know, I often say that too many boys never become men because a boy always wants to be about me. You know, what am I going to get out of it? What about me? What about me? What about me? That's not what a man asks. A man gives away his life for others every day 
day, you know? And so it's not when you wake up, like I tell people to put three words on their mirror in their bathroom. I am third. God is first, others are second, I am last. So every night when you're brushing your teeth before you go to bed and you see that I am third, you think, did I do at least one unselfish act today? And if the answer is no, you were not a man of Christ today. You were a selfish, miserable human being that lived only for yourself. Your job, sir, is to give away your life in love every day. And just think, if we start, all men start doing that, would change the country, would change the world. Mm. Because most men live for themselves, and it's enough. It's enough. Uh, John Leonetti has enough. a book. John Leonetti has a book, Get Over Yourself. And you know, I got I, that. <laughs> <laughs> And I can tell you, I have these, I, I hear these conversations quite often. Uh, I don't know if it's kind of a new agey yoga hippie or whatever. I don't know what it is, but I hear people say, I've really been working on myself a lot. And there becomes mm. such an interior focus. I'm having my meditation, but they're meditating on themselves instead of on God. There's, I, there's so much time and effort working on themselves. I've been working on this. I'm, this is the new way I've learned to think. This is... This is this interior work I've been doing. Uh, get over yourself and start to give yourself. Jesus said, "If you, if you lose your life for my sake, you'll, you know, you'll find yourself. If you really want to know who you are, start giving yourself away." Absolutely. And again, you can always tell what something is when, is when you squeeze it. So when you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. What happens when they squeeze us? What comes out? Is it selfishness? Is it love? Is it anger? What is it when we are squeezed? And mm. today's society squeezes us a lot. Mm. So we need to sit there and think, okay, what comes out of me? What am I made of? Because by your fruit, you shall know them. So if we have surrendered ourselves so much, you know, too often uh, people think being a Christian is just following a bunch of rules. You know, mm. that isn't enough. Being a Christian means that I no longer live. Jesus Christ lives inside of me of me, Galatians 2, 19 and 20. So what that means is we got to get out of the way and let Jesus live his life through us. So that's that full surrender. So I surrender myself so much that now Jesus lives. So when I get squeezed, you see Jesus. You don't see Larry. That got to be what it is. And, you, and that's got to be it for all of us. And you see this part of this self-donation is in our world today, uh, people have this vicarious sort of justice warrior attitude of well, I take offense at that. Oh. You know, that, 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 that offends me on behalf of this other person. Uh, my, yes. wife had this, my wife has this really cool uh, princess uh, outfit that she made for Halloween one year. And someone said to her, that's really offensive to Native Americans. She goes, well, I have a lot of Native American blood in me, you know. Um, but we, yes. take, we, take offense, uh, we take offense on behalf of other people, and we think that's virtue. But what does the Bible say about love? Love does not take offense. People need to grow up, Absolutely. get over themselves, become a shock absorber. Jesus was the biggest shock absorber of all on the cross. You know, he took the pain and suffering of the world, received it all, absorbed it all, and, 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 and caused it to leave this earth if we'll just let it. There's a, one of my favorite books is a book called Unoffendable. And it's about a, by a Christian author and just talks about Jesus was the most unoffendable person that ever lived. Mm -hmm. He wasn't offended by people. He would sit there and he came and got into what they did. Doesn't mean he okayed everything. You still say what's right and wrong. But we are offended constantly mm -hmm. by everything. And we need to be sitting there. And instead of always going and saying what offends us, we got to talk about the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. That his light is stronger than our darkness. It just just is. Oh, it's so beautiful. You know, the scandal of the cross. Absolutely. Jesus going, you know, and I, the reading I had the other, the other morning, what, Jesus sitting with the, the, um, in the Pharisee's house. And he was offended that Jesus didn't wash in the, in the formal way he was required to wash. And then he asked the man about, not in a judgmental way, but talked about it's not what, you know, what, not what uh, goes into a mouth, but what comes out of a mouth. We're talking to <laughs> Father Larry Richards. Uh, Father, we're going we're gonna to take a little break here right now, and they can find you where? At uh, reasonforourhope.org. And what's or the on statement? Twitter, Father Larry Rich Richards, or Facebook, Father Larry Richards. I'm all over that stuff. Just, just search Father Larry Richards. And then I want to ask you one more thing before we go. What is yep. that thing you say? I think it's one of the names of one of your books, too. No Bible. What is that? No I can Bible, say it, no and I want breakfast. you to say it. 
Okay. Yeah. No, Bible, no Bible, no breakfast. No breakfast. Yeah, go ahead. No Bible, no bed. It's one oh. of my calendars. So every day you, you start off with the word of God. Before the world flesh or devil talks to you, let God talk to you. And before you go to bed, you let God talk to you. So you begin your day listening to God. You end your day listening to God. It'll change your life. Yeah, and you know, Scripture uh, is the living word of God. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes people approach the Bible like, oh, I'm going to dissect this. I'm going to really dig down and academically figure this out. But be careful, because you don't dissect the Word of God. It dissects you. It's the sword of the Spirit. Exactly. But why not? Why not, right first thing in the morning, have the Lord take that pers- surgical strike and get rid of the cobwebs of the world, pierce your heart, give you his love, his power, his knowledge, his, his desire for you. Because I like, like Jeff Caven says, every time you see him, God loves you and has a perfect plan for your life. We're talking with Father Larry Richards. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more with Father Larry. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have as our guest today, our co-adventure guide, Father Larry Richards. I want to let you know, when you give your life to Jesus, get ready for an adventure. There's nothing more thrilling, more demanding, more exciting than being in God's will. Because when you're in God's will, you get to see God move. You miss out on so much of, of, God's, uh, God, of, of God's movement when you're not involved in his will. And so many people think, oh, if I give my life to the Lord, if I totally surrender to him, I'm not going to be myself anymore. Nothing could be further from the truth. God infused your spiritual soul in you. He, your, 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 your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your, your basic nature of who you are isn't even alive, fully alive until you uh, give your life to Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's almost like plugging in uh, a, a toy that you give a kid for Christmas, and then when you plug it in, it, it, it just comes to life and starts moving. Plug into uh, the life of God. Surrender your life to Jesus. Father Larry, I want to ask you this question. Yep. There is one person, maybe I always envisioned the guy in the black pickup truck, but there's, one, there's several of these individuals, but right now, what we've been sharing, they're in a place in their life where it's kind of like, you know what? I used to sail my sailboat, Father. I always had a rope that I would trail out behind because no one would want to sail with me. I had to sail alone. So there's this rope, yeah. and every 10 feet there was a knot in the rope. And the very last uh, knot in that rope, sailors call the bitter end, that rope that trails behind the boat. It's like you hope if you fall out, you'll catch it. There's some men right now that are right there at that bitter end. Mm. Uh, they're ashamed. Uh, they don't even think that they can come to God. They don't realize it's a come-as-you-are party. Can you give them the spiritual guidance they need right now to make that turn, to get that traction, and what steps they should take? First, when you begin to realize that God knew every sin you would ever commit, and yet he still loved you and he still wanted you to exist. And not only did he know that what sin you would commit, that he never stopped loving you. He always wanted you to exist. And then he sent his son, Jesus, to pay the penalty for what you've done wrong. And see, that's the thing is we're saved by what Jesus Christ did for us, not what we do for him. And so you just need to uh, trust that, surrender to that. Let God give his son for you. So when you accept the Lord Jesus and you just say, Jesus, you got to save me. Yes, that's the point. He's a savior. He came to save you. You got to let him. 
you and I, like the, today when we're doing this, the readings all have sinned and all are deprived of the glory of God. That's you, that's me, we all, none of us, if I was to stand before God right now and he says, okay, Richards, give me an account of your life, and he'd say, what you deserve is damnation. And that's exactly correct. I deserve eternal damnation. But I would look and say, don't look at me, Father, look at Jesus. And then Jesus paid the penalty for my sin. He paid the penalty for your sin. You need to receive that so that you no longer live, but Jesus Christ lives inside of you. You might even think you have the power to change. You don't. <laughs> he does. He has the power to change you. So if you surrender to him, he'll give you that power. He'll change you. He'll make you a new person. You know, the devil loves to keep you focused on yourself and your past. Jesus says, you look at me and you look at the future. You get to decide who you're going to look at right now. Would it be yourself and your past and thus the devil? Or will you repent of your past, look at Jesus, look at the future? He wants you to have joy. He wants you to live life abundantly. The devil wants you to feel miserable, and he's doing a good job with some of you at this very moment. Tell him to go to hell and focus on Jesus. Repent and begin again. Amen. I mean, so many people walk around with little handles on the back. And it's just like every little demon could just grab on that. Remember when you did this? Remember when you did that? Exactly. And our response is the same as Jesus. Just to quote Scripture, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law, the Roman spirit of life what? in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. But so many men right now, Father, are, 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 are just, you know, the porn, pornography is a huge thing for men. Sure. I, I, you know, when I was young, you had to go find, you had to go look for that. Now, you're, you're being pursued by Satan right now. All men have got to be, be equipped and understand how they deal with that, he, he deal with that battle, and it isolates, it shames uh, men. Sure. And this is one of the, some of the men right now that are listening, they want to give their life to Jesus, but they can't break loose from that. What, would you, what prescription would you give to them? First of all, it's what Jesus does for you, not what you do for him. He can set you free from that easily. But I'm going to tell you the best way to deal with temptation, not only sexual temptation, but all temptation. One, do it the way Jesus did it. In Mark chapter one, verse 11, he knew who he was. You got to know who you are. God, the father, when he went to pray, looked at him and said, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. God always looks at you and says, you are my beloved son. I'm pleased with you. You're a son of God. See, God hates sin. But why does God hate sin? He hates sin because it makes his son a slave. You are not a slave. You are a son. So you got to know who you are. And then once you know who you are, then he gives us the power of the spirit. Cause then it says after Jesus was baptized, God, the father said, you are my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Then it said the spirit led him into the desert to be tempted. You have the power of God within you. He's not outside of you. God lives inside of you. The spirit of the living God gives you gives you power and strength. And so you surrender to the power of God. You don't say, I can't do this, Jesus. I can't, I can't deal with the temptation. You got to. And so that's where he gave you the spirit. The power of God is inside of you. So you're not weak, you're strong. And mm. then finally sit there and like Jesus dealt with the devil by taking the word of God and shoving it down the devil's throat and the devil run. You got to know and go to Google and put like if you struggle with lust, say scriptures to help with lust and memorize some of those or mm. scriptures to help with greed. Memorize one or two of those. And whenever you're being tempted, take the word of God, who is Jesus himself, and shove it down the devil's throat and the devil will run. The last thing is you need help. So you need help from a brother. And if you are too embarrassed to find a brother around you, go to St. Joseph. Joseph was the, think about it, he had the most beautiful woman in the world and he never touched her. And he was like us in all things, including sin. So he knows what it is to be a man. So to have a man in heaven who's praying for you, who got your back, who's gonna support you in prayer, and he's going to help you tremendously. So those are the things that are going to help you. You know who you are. You know what kind of power you have. You memorize the word of God because it's the power. It's the sword that can kill the demon. You shove it down the devil's throat, and you know that you're not doing this alone. You have the saints that are praying for you. And by all means, Father, uh, don't you know, seek out brotherhood. When, when Lazarus was sure. raised from the dead, and you can you imagine— 
he had been in the grave for three, two or three days. They said, you know, he's going to stink. You know, you don't go yeah. in there. When he was when he was raised from the dead, he, he kind of he came up and he started walking out of that cave. But he was all bound up in burial cloth. And Jesus' yep. words to the to everyone was unbind him. And so many yep. of us are just bound up. If we will stop with our pride, and and seek out brotherhood, we can help unbind each other. But one of the greatest things you can do too, and I know this just from my ministry father, how many people have told me, how many men especially, I returned to Jesus when I when I went the, when I had the experience of going to confession. Talk talk yeah. to us about that. Confession is what I love to talk about the most because confession is where you meet Jesus and Jesus takes his blood and he covers you. Isn't it amazing? Most people sit there and think if anyone really knew me, they couldn't love me. And when you go to confession, you say, this is what I hate most about myself. And a priest can look at you and says, you are loved, you are forgiven, and now you're set free. That it's the most freeing thing ever. And so it's at confession where you finally go that Christ will take all your sins upon himself and every sin you confess, you don't have to die for it. Jesus dies for it. But every sin you do not confess, he doesn't die for it. You got to die for it. So you got to go to confession. You got to make a good confession. Mm. And then you got to know that when you do, when you walk out of that confessional, it's like you were just born again. Everything is new. It doesn't matter what's happened in the past. It's all been covered by the blood of Jesus. You begin again. And so again, now you look at Jesus in the future, not yourself and your past. So it's one of the greatest things ever. Use the sacrament that God has given you to set you free. Father Larry, you know, we had Father Scott, my pastor here in Florida with us on Long Ride Home in Hawaii. And we set him up. We said, hey, we're all going to go skydiving. Every day I said, who's going to go sky- skydiving? Everybody said they were going to go skydiving. Not Father me. Scott, Father Scott said he was going to go skydiving. And I can always test someone by shaking their hand to see if they're serious, because their hand is yep. clammy if they're serious. Uh, but at the very end, we had set him up, because when it was time to go jump, we all said, oh, I got a paper cut. I can't jump. So Father Scott jumped. But I just remember wow. uh, the first time, every time I skydive, I, I realize I'm, I'm scared. I'm not like one of these people that is, I'm scared. Um, it's kind of like going to confession. You're kind of scared. You know, you, you really should be. And then, then as you get in that line and the line gets shorter, you realize, oh, I'm going to go in there. It's kind of like when you put on your chute and you get in that plane and there's eight people in the plane, then there's seven people, then there's six people, and now it's your turn. But once you make that leap into the confessional, you begin to open up your heart. And I'll tell you, I was in the confessional. I was in the airplane once and seven or eight people exited. Then it was about my son's and my turn next. And there was one other guy that was supposed to jump. He lost his bowels in the plane. And the plane, oh, wow. Believe me, you wanted to jump. But that's yeah. the person who doesn't go to confession. Exactly. You, know, you, you need to get to confession, get rid of that stink. Everyone, Almost everyone who jumps out of that plane, when you get a video on their face, they're, they're just thrilled. They have this big old grin on their face. When the canopy opens, you just feel your lungs. You, know, you don't even need to breathe when you jump out of a plane. It just The oxygen goes right into your body. And when you land, you feel like you can conquer the world. And that's the essence of going to confession. It's okay to be afraid of it. Just start making one little step by calling for an appointment with the priest and showing up and preparing. And the priest will help you get through that confession. But these steps that Father Larry is talking about can help you uh, uh, cooperate with God's grace to totally uh, start get your life on the right path and living on the, on the narrow way. Father, next week I start for tomorrow— I start teaching on my Ocean Sunrise Catechism because we just finished the first round. I'm going to start by teaching the Didache, the two ways, the original nice. Catechism. Nice. Wow. We're talking, with Father Larry, we're talking with Father Larry Richards. we got to go, Father. Where can they find you again? What website? The Reason for Our Hope. Again, just put Father Larry in Google, and you're going to find me. me. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I don't have to ask you where they can find you. People, people can find you anywhere, anywhere they want. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just dial Father Larry. This is the Bear oh, Wozniak yeah. Adventure. Uh, Till next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us 
at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.